Hello and welcome to Insight. In this show today, we are going to talk about two major developments on the economic front, the optimism around passage of the GST bill and the problem of soaring food prices. The biggest tax reform of the country, the goods and services tax, is likely to be implemented soon. Yesterday, after a meeting with the Empowered Committee of State Finance Ministers, Mr. Arun Jaitley expressed this hope. The Finance Minister said that all states except Tamil Nadu have agreed on the broad contours of the GST. The Goods and Services Tax Bill is a step closer to reality, with all states except Tamil Nadu backing it unanimously. The view emerged after Finance Minister Arun Jaitley met Finance Ministers of 22 states in Kolkata for an Empowered Committee meeting yesterday. GST, which aims to bring the country under a unified tax regime, was proposed by the Congress-led UPA government in 2006. Now the Narendra Modi government is looking to pass it in Parliament in the coming monsoon session. The bill has been passed by the Lok Sabha and faces a hurdle in the Rajya Sabha. GST is seen as the biggest tax reform in a decade that aims to integrate the country into a common market by removing barriers to trade that exist across the states. It will subsume all the indirect taxes of the centre and states including excise duty, value-added tax and service tax. Your report. And it is believed that the passage of the GST can push the economic growth by 1.5% to 2% in the long run. The question is, will GST become a reality soon? And to talk more on this, I'm joined by Mr. Gopal Krishna Agrawal, who's National Spokesperson, Economic Affairs, BJP, and also Dr. Sunil Gupta, who's an economist and a financial expert. Let me start the discussion with you, uh, Dr. Gupta. How do you look at the fact that GST looks like that it's really going to be a reality, but uh, you know, how crucial is GST for uh, us as a country to have a unified tax regime? It is uniform must. Tax regime. Yeah. It is required. Once it will be implemented, it will be a real big bang for the economic uh, reality of India. Our relations with the international community, maybe America, maybe European Union, everybody is looking at us with the hope that GST will become a reality very soon be it the investors, international investors or FTI or you can say uh, our uh, PM just visited many countries be it Arab or Qatar or Dubai, UAE, whatever. They all have committed some investments towards India. Those will become I think reality once GST is passed. They are hoping for that. They are waiting for that. Once GST will be passed, these all investments will come to India will be flushed with the funds and all the uh, sectors be it uh, our uh, defense sector or railway or any other sector these will uh, whatever fund we will be requiring the funds will come. Okay so there's a lot of hope and optimism around that but we know that politics here works parallelly with the economic uh, reforms and this measure of GST we hadn't seen how there were certain roadblocks created by uh, due to the lack of political consensus. Well, is the is the road now very clear uh, for uh, your government, uh, Mr. Agarwal, at this point? I think the road is very clear. And yesterday's statement by the finance minister specifically is very encouraging. If you see, there were around 22 states represented by their finance ministers and seven senior officers from other states. So at least there were 29 states out of the total uh, number of people in the uh, empowered committees meeting and except Tamil Nadu all have uh, positively supported and uh, there is a general consensus even uh, Jailalita ji chief minister of Tamil Nadu also met uh, the PM uh, in the evening and I don't know what transpired but uh, basically there are some issues but uh, uh, FM has very clearly categorically said that there is a consensus on the GST bill and that only led to yesterday the draft bill being released. Right. It's a major sign yeah. that uh, the government is very transparent on the issue. Mm -hmm. Government is very confident on all the aspects of the GST bill. There has been a widespread consultation over a period of uh, two years and before also and the bill the current draft bill has passed through standing committee, empowered committee, various uh, uh, discussion forums and now there is a consensus and very minor only one issue but is how, Congress. How, how are the concerns of uh, states like Tamil Nadu uh, going to be accommodated? 
no, actually there may be concerns of various people and other thing. Ultimately, when you have to pass a bill of such a high, a big magnitude, which will affect the future of our economic growth, which will affect the uh, movement of the goods and services across the states, where the whole country can be int uh, integrated into a single market. So, all uh, there will be some bargaining give and take for all states. Mm -hmm. So, if some states, some say that the manufacturing states had some issues concerning their uh, reduction in the uh, revenue and some uh, uh, trading states said that we were we, we may lose some revenue. So, ultimately the central government has committed that uh, it will uh, uh, reach uh, it will uh, compensate the states for next five years all revenue losses. Hmm. So, therefore, all concerns ultimately are going to be uh, uh, cleared by this bill. And how do you look at uh, the the fact that the Congress had opposed a couple of uh, those heard you know couple of those points. Uh, one of course was around the uh, one percent interstate additional levy, and the one on the GST the cap on the GST rate. Uh, how do you look at you know that aspect and do you think that even the Congress will have to come around? Uh, Congress had given very clearly three objections. One was 1 percent interstate uh, tax extra levy to manufacturing uh, states which was provided because of the demand from the various some of the states. So, FMS said that we can concede that point if the, all the states agree. When, when we are compensating this problem does not take so much of a significance because if some, uh, some state is losing some part of it, it will be compensated by the center. So, uh, FMS said that we can concede this point with regard to dispute resolution was also one of the yes. objections. Yes. There the FMS of we are very open as a party hmm. that dispute resolution mechanism uh, states also wanted a participation into it and that mechanism that council will be formed and its composition will be discussed in the parliament. The most contentious issue only with uh, Congress a uh, main opposition party was not on the cap of the uh, GST rate that cap is agreed by uh, the cent uh, uh, of BJP Modi government also, but they wanted it in the into the constitution but, provision that's, that's right. and all states yesterday there is a consensus on all state that it cannot come into the constitution because it is a very complicated bill and it requires a two third majority for any amendment or passing. So, any time the government uh, for its uh, um, uh, governance needs sometimes revision of rates hmm. which can go up or do go down okay, also. Let me take uh, Dr. Gupta's view on this. Dr. Gupta, is it uh, uh, advisable that it sh this should not be a part of the constitutional uh, process? That capping. You know, yeah, the capping. Uh, do you think it is, it is advisable? I think it should not be a part of the bill mm -hmm. because as Gopalji said, it will be a big hurdle in future whenever any government, be it BJP or Congress or any we'll other government the in rates. center, yeah. there may be exigencies. They want to increase or reduce the taxes. They have to go through the same process of taking the two-third majority of both the houses and 50 percent, more than 50 percent of the state's recommendation, uh, which is required for the constitutional amendment. Right. I think that will not be advisable. But you know, uh, what about the, the overall tax is, is going to be 18 percent. This is yeah. what uh, was uh, yeah. expected yeah. to be. Well, um, Dr. Gupta, how do you look at the fact that, you know, many people would, would start wondering as to what 18 percent would really mean when it comes to goods and services and whatever you're going to buy, you see, at least it that's will, going to mean that much. So, you know, any sort of change in that, of course, reduction is always welcome, but any sort of increase if it happens because of the economic situation. How do you look at those concerns too, which are attached and which is probably one of the arguments that the Congress is putting forward? Which we cannot answer as of now. Once uh, today it is fixed, for example, 18 percent and later on after five years or 10 years down the line, they are requiring it to be increased to 20 percent for some reason. Yes. There must be some compelling reasons of that time. That time uh, we cannot uh, forecast today. So that time we will discuss why they are increasing these 2 percent, okay. if so. Okay. Okay. Mr. Agarwal. Uh, what I want to say on this is that the uh, excise uh, at present is higher, much higher. It is around 27 percent, 21 percent. There are three rates on excise duty and that will be ultimately reduced. On the part of service tax, definitely at present it is around 15 percent. It will be in, uh, being increased to 18 percent. So, excise people have manufacturing will have a major boost. Service sector though may lose some uh, of its revenue, but they will get an input benefit of even excise. At mm -hmm. present, excise and service 
tax are not uh, uh, interchangeable or right. uh, they ca cannot be consumed across. So they will have this benefit. And even you see, there is a con consumation of uh, all state uh, taxes along with this. That's right. The, the, there ultimately everybody is going to be benefited and it, it is a consensus that even consumer will have a lower tax because mm. input cost is, is will be credited. So Dr. Gupta, that is advisable that one should, a con as a country, we should have a uniform tax system in which you know all of these taxes including the state uh, taxes can be subsumed yes it is uh, immediately advisable because as far as indian manufacturing sector is concerned they are looking for it it will be boosted secondly which i said earlier also the foreign countries our foreign investors they are also looking uh, towards it it should be done immediately because they uh, they were facing lot of problems earlier like uh, the uh, differential uh, rates were there or the they need a, a kind of one window system hmm. because they have to face uh, numerous uh, windows for the uh, for implementation of any project foreign countries uh, whenever they come he here in india to invest or to uh, set up some plant they face so many problems that's why to uh, avoid those problems this is a must Okay, but uh, how do you look at the other aspects, uh, Mr. Agarwal? What is it that your government is really targeting at uh, after the GST and once the GST comes into force? Our mandate at 2014 was ease of doing business was very important. Econ for economic development, we need a strong push in the manufacturing sector, even uh, in all segments for creating uh, employment, for creating infrastructure, creating economic growth in the trade and uh, services sector so ultimately gst is one factor it is not only the rate it is the ease of doing business because once you have a uniform a single tax there will be ease of doing in filing returns ease in cre credit uh, uh, requirements and etc so one thing important in gst is ease of doing business that's very important second aspect in gst we see is there will be an it infrastructure and there will be transparency and no leakages and even it will fight corruption mm -hmm. they, uh, or if you talk to any industrialists or traders they say there is a big uh, amount of corruption in uh, management of G, uh, this uh, VAT, sale tax, octroi, even income tax, indirect taxation. There, there, there is a re regular complaint that there is a large scale of corruption mm. and with this GST there will be complete in IT infrastructure where the flow of transaction is com transparent and online and there is an audit trail. So there will be uh, quite uh, uh, simplification in tax uh, laws also and returns also, transparency, reduction in corruption, ease of doing business and all thing, these things yeah, yeah. are all these things are included in the model gst draft yes. 2 which was uh, yes. which came out because yesterday. there was some delay people were saying earlier also we had a discussion with your channel and other places also that there is a delay in gst in path passage in the parliament we said it's not the only issue that it's not the only passage of the bill in the parliament we need the complete inf it infrastructure and government was preparing within this one or two years for setting up this uh, IT infrastructure where uh, the the whole uh, flow of transaction can take place online and in a uh, computerized mechanism. So that infrastructure was also being created and it will be now tested and used. Okay. Dr. Gupta, how do you look at the, the contentions that several states had? Uh, you know, of course, some of them now have come on board and uh, the fact that Tamil Nadu still maintains it is one of those producing states and it's basically the producers who had this concern around the interstate uh, levy. Uh, 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 how do you look at the, the, the contentions that these states had and do you think that it's very important to address those concerns too, to strike a balance throughout the country? I think as far as interstate tax of 1% is concerned, uh, as Gopalji told just, FM has clearly said, okay, if the states are of the view that it should not be there, so it, should, it will not be there. So it will clear the uh, hurdle from the Tamil Nadu, I think that is the biggest concern they are having. Hmm. So, you know, but how, how is one supposed to look at those needs that these states that really you have? See, you see, Gujarat uh, is also one of them. You see, Tamil total, Nadu is also uh, all one. states were on board, 22 uh, states, represent, uh, finance ministers were there, other representatives were there. Everybody is on board now as far as 1% is concerned. Only Tamil Nadu has 
uh, raised the objection. That's right. But if the other states are also having the same view, so then it will be addressed. So, you know, parting with that 1%, in fact, you know, giving that 1% additional yes. uh, thing to the states is, is quite a doable thing. This is what the FM is in next, no, in next five years, they are obviously going to compensate everything, whether 1% is there or not. It doesn't make any difference for the central government. The important thing is on to tackle this issue, there are at present not a uniform GST, there are two GST. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One is the state GST and, and the one, other one is, is the, the central, one central GST. Central. So, central GST will subsume, uh, uh, consume uh, service tax and excise and state GST will uh, consume this uh, uh, octroi, VAT and the, the sale tax. Hmm. So, actually there is a two tire at present which will in the future be merged into a single GST. So, the state's problem, their revenue loss, they will get from state GST and a center will manage the center GST and then uh, loss and editing th that will be compiled at the center level. So, I think that problem of the states has been tackled very clearly on the giving them a, a separate structure on state GST and uh, the ultimately the thing is that uh, 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 this whole draft bill this is a very important step this government at present our government has taken in this uh, but this is a very important bill and it has now come put it on a public domain for comment hmm. it has been very well discussed at various uh, regulatory forums or standing committees or you know, knowledge forums now this bill is in the public domain they can go through uh, the, that bill and give their suggestion which the government will further incorporate hmm. so this is a very transparent and open uh, way of enacting a law where the all your objections will <coughs> independently be taken care of. And what about the, the numbers in the Rajya Sabha since that is going to be a very crucial thing for uh, uh, this bill to be cleared? No, I think now the, uh, the current uh, status if you see after this uh, elections on 11th June, BJP's strength is uh, 51 MPs in Rajya Sabha plus their uh, NDA alliance is another uh, uh, present and if the state government, uh, uh, regional parties, Trinamool, Congress has uh, said support, even BJD, RJD, even Nitish Kumarji's uh, uh, party has also given support to BSP, SP, all these parties have committed their support, Shiv Seda, Akali Dal, so uh, only the Congress which uh, is uh, opposing their strength has reduced to 59 MP. So, I think now there is not a big gap where now we can the uh, party can manage the support because people have uh, openly expressed their support for the bill even and there is a big pressure even on Congress from the people. Mm -hmm. The whole country wants that this bill should be paused, there should be no politics on this, hmm. it is an economic agenda, it is must for the growth, it is must for transparency, it is must for ease of doing business and it is a major steps in the reform and forward looking bill. Fine, fine. So, as of now we uh, see that there is a lot of uh, political consensus now emerging on this and certainly as has been pegged that the GST is going to be a game changer. Yes. Well, thank you very much uh, Dr. Gupta for joining us in the discussion. Yes. We will take a very quick break now and after the break in the next segment we will look at the issue of rising food prices. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. In Insight now, a look at the issue of rising food prices, something that's really pinching the consumers. The tomato prices have shot up to 80 and 100 rupees a kg, potato prices are soaring and pulses continue to remain expensive. This even after efforts have been made to maintain adequate stocks and keep check on hoarders. Wholesale price-based inflation jumped to 0.79% in May. Vegetable prices are witnessing a double-digit growth. Inflation in vegetables came in at 12.94%, a sharp rise from 2.21% a month earlier. Pulse inflation remain at over 35%. The hardening of WPI food inflation follows the trend of retail inflation released on Monday, which touched a 21-month high of 5.76% in May, mainly due to rising prices of food items. Food prices have begun to shoot up. Tomato prices have doubled. Potato rates have also been on the rise. 
Retail prices of pulses are still ruling high at over 170 rupees per kg, even as the government is making efforts to boost supply through its newly created buffer stock and imports. According to the WPI data, vegetable inflation rose sharply to 12.94% from 2.21% a month earlier. To check the situation, the finance minister has called a meeting of food, agriculture ministers and other senior officials today. The centre is likely to chalk out an immediate plan to insulate consumers from the effects of rising food prices and tighten the nose on hoarders. A group of ministers comprising food, agriculture and commerce ministers has been set up, which will be headed by the finance minister. The GOM in its meeting next week is expected to deliberate on a long-term strategy to tackle seasonal variations in food prices. Online procurement of food items and strengthening price monitoring mechanisms could be the key elements of government's long-term plan. Though all these efforts may take time to bear fruit. Your report. And the government has taken con uh, price control measures in the past and will be looking at uh, taking long-term measures now. But what is really leading to the rise in food prices and can it be contained? To talk more on this, I'm joined by Mr. Shantanu Guhare, India editor, Central European News. And uh, also Mr. Gopal Krishna Agrawal joins me on the panel. Well, uh, let me let me ask you, Mr. Agarwal, is it really giving a very tough time uh, you know, to your government, especially because price rise continues to remain a concern and whenever there is an impact on the market, obviously people turn to the government and ask as to what is really leading to this. Uh, actually, for any government, the food price items inflation is a very uh, difficult situation to manage because there is a, sometime on some items, there is a demand and supply gap in the country. And with large population below the poverty line, BPA below BPA level, we have to take uh, uh, serious uh, measures on the actually food prior items uh, inflation, which are uh, of uh, consumption uh, important uh, for the lower mid uh, cl middle class and uh, poor people and the remote areas. And therefore, two or three items are very critical for the government to manage them. We have seen them in the past mm -hmm. and this time, we are well prepared and we have been uh, taking uh, concent concentrated measures to tackle those things. But still, there are some issues which are out of the control of the government, but um, uh, definitely that, that concern will be taken care of. And is monsoon also one of the key reasons? Though there had been certain reports that uh, even a slight delay in the monsoon uh, has led to some sort of a rise in the prices of pulses, wheat, milk, sugar, oil seeds. No, pulse is a very different situation yeah. in India because there is a, a big gap between the uh, de, uh, production that we have to, uh, have in India and the demand that we consume in India. We always have to import and that import is being taken, uh, taken care of by the government. But when the international prices of the pulses also rise, that becomes sometime a problem. So therefore, is in the current year, government has already placed orders uh, at the international market. It has already procured around 40,000 tons. Uh, tons of pulses, right. advance yeah. order has already been placed, hmm. even domestic procurement as your report said has started from the domestic so that uh, through uh, PDS and other uh, systems uh, this supply will go. But I, what we have to take care is that this whole supply of food items like pulses and other things go through the mechanism of state governments and they have to be active. Government, central government has already asked them to place their orders at 120 rupees a kg for uh, from the central to procure and to supply through the in their uh, states the bills, right. and that is important that the state governments now act in advance hmm. uh, they should give to the central uh, government whatever their requirement is how much they require they should procure at the, the subsidized rate which the government is uh, 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 ready to central government okay. is ready to give. Fine. So that uh, activity is required at the state level. Okay. Okay. With regard to one more thing, I think, mm. with regard to vegetable, it's very seasonal. It will depend upon several factors, which sometimes get into beyond the control of uh, immediate. Uh, uh, and government. what what are those factors? These are uh, whether if there is a uh, sudden uh, destruction in the some of the item like we have seen in the tomato now mm. there has been a, a loss of lo uh, because of monsoon or storms or other things right. because they are a pe of perishable nature. nature they cannot be large quantity cannot be procured internationally and their storage is also a problem. So Shantanu is there a 
variety of factors responsible for the rise in the food prices? Not exactly. I think there are primarily two factors. And every time we discuss this price rise vis a vis the government, I think it's very futile to blame the government at center. The government actually doesn't have a major role to play. And already the RBI governor has said there won't be any price cuts. In a country where about 263 million farmers are dependent on the vagaries of monsoon, that means almost 70% of your farm products is dependent on whether you get a great monsoon or not. Yeah. These kind of pressures will continue to remain and it has remained like that. Take a look at last year, sometime in May, unseasonal rains and hailstorms really messed up the whole market. This is number one. Number two, despite being repeatedly said the farm to fork revolution of Mukesh Ambani didn't happen because there were a lot of non-takers for that. They felt obviously the markets would be drowned, British man will take over the poor man's land, all kind of theories were floated. But had that happened and had that huge chain of mm -hmm. cold storage and warehousing would have been in place, as Mr. Agarwal also said, that the states need to be proactive, Indian states are rarely proactive when it comes to vegetables. The tendency to look at the center at the last moment has often messed up many things. Uh -huh. And it's a very realistic thing for studio debates and political discussion and editorial op-ed page articles. It's very nice to say the government at the center needs to take a proactive call. Well, we all remember Honestly, how pulses, you know, last year, yeah. we all remember how uh, the states were asked to act against hoarders and within a gap of a Nobody few Nobody will days, act against the hoarders. Don't forget that's a huge chunk of the economy, almost like a parallel black economy, right. like the cash economy. Right. So the, you're, you can't act against the hoarders because you don't have a parallel system. But of lakhs great, of tons were, of, the of pulses were, were seized uh, at that point of but time. But the point that, that shows much. that we have, we have enough to feed but not enough to distribute and that's a problem. And hoarding uh, is a parallel concern. It, is, it always goes, and it has been going on for about four to five, maybe six decades. Decades, that's right. Much before the independence. So I think that is one issue. Secondly, also a few other things impacting this current price rise is the fact that the telecom prices have gone up, the trouble prices have gone up, eating out has become a problem. Whatever middle segment, we have a large scale middle class that is upwardly mobile, aspirational in nature. So there it has imp started impacting them. There has been a decline in the way people go out and eat and the way people now order at home, the way people actually go out and buy from various markets. Mm. Indian markets are also also supplied. Let's say a city market depends on supplies from outside. There is a problem of those supplies also. It doesn't come on time. So I think those are multiple factors that add up. But the biggest of all is the monsoon. Because our over dependence amazing, on monsoon has always created a problem. And how, how do you look at the seasonal vegetables and that part? That is all that, that's, due to that's all right. I mean, I'm not really too much worried about that. But the main, main core food product which people consume, that is actually still, we are actually... Yeah, despite, the, despite, despite various, uh, you know, steps taken in order to... I mean, almost all down. government try and take steps. But somewhere... Pulses remain a major Pulses concern. remain a major issue. In a country where even onion prices once almost dismantled the government. That's right. So you can imagine that, that it's called, just called the basics. And that's where we have not changed, we have not improved. And what's I really doubt... What's the trouble according to you in the Pulses case? Supplies. That is it. We have enough, but we don't know how to supply it. Mr. Gawal. No, I think pulses, there is a, a supply and demand gap, very particularly, because uh, our uh, we cannot uh, increase the area under pulses, and it is uh, that uh, amount, uh, that climatic conditions but that is produced, required. That's enough hmm. no, for the but current country. A yeah. demand and supply gap, that has to be matched through imports, and the government is doing that. You so have got, uh, yeah. Any one important Papa issue where a long-term reform that the government is taking is national agriculture market. Yeah. The, we yeah. had the 585 mandis where the farmer was taking uh, was taken for rides by the local aratiyas and mandis that reform was needed and the government has started in this budget uh, reforming this that we need a national agriculture market where uh, this all wait, issue wait, uh, I, I have a point here. Can, you know this yeah. great yes. national agriculture market is a great effort mm -hmm. Nobody disputes that, but India had an agricultural market. Hmm. If somebody studies Mumbai politics and all kind of economics, the one driven by Jignesh Shah's uh, FT. Uh, but were they connected? Yeah, were they were all connected, they were yeah. well wired. Hmm. But then all were dismantled because of peculiar policies and uh, uh, international hassles. 
what I'm saying is, this market existed even 10 years ago. Why is it this markets were not nurtured? The commodities market is a very burgeoning market in a country where only 10% of us actually go and invest in stock markets. We haven't ourselves not done it. Mm. I think any new government has come. Of course, Mr. Narendra Modi, I was there in Bombay when this entire event was unfolded. It's a great effort. It's a wonderful initiative and everybody praised the Prime Minister for that. But it is just a recent step. To see its fructifying, to see its final result, you will have to wait for at least two and a half, three years, not before that. I, I, because uh, I have seen in the budget, the government has first time uh, uh, start uh, given a fund for integration and That's computerization right. of these 585 mandis. Mm. And in the first phase, at least 50 mandis will be uh, computerized and, uh, in this year itself. So the process will start ultimately the uh, easy flow and transparent flow and uh, flow of uh, food sir, commodities sir, across sir, uh, across uh, uh, the yes, uh, 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 countries various places is required and this reform will definitely benefit the farmers and there are some certain distortions also because of uh, some policies in MSP and uh, irrigation uh, uh, area under irrigation okay. so that also needs to be reformed because in Maharashtra you see a uh, lot of sugar lobby is growing but there is a shortage of water and water. sugar requires Absolutely. lot of water That's so right. these kind of policy level mismatch bit by the government has also resulted in distortion but is in it manufacturing going to, is it going to take some time before there is an impact a visible impact of the uh, the nam uh, the national agricultural markets there will be but ultimately uh, when the government will uh, tackle the short term supply, supply and demand mismatch from import and procurement for uh, earlier procurement that we have seen that now in the uh, period to come where uh, is government has today that taking place a meeting important That's meeting right. is right. being taken pl uh, taking place at with the finance minister himself uh, is uh, attend uh, conducting and all the important ministers and secretaries of all the important right. ministries on uh, food and there's a item. GOM which has been set up now Sir. which will be meeting uh, yeah yeah we also Shantan. know how GOMs work mm -hmm. The group of ministers often fail to deliver. I'm not saying the current group of ministers will also fail to deliver. I have high hopes on them. But any new move, any new initiative, which I keep repeating, takes time to fructify. The biggest problem in the food chain is the state's lackadaisical attitude to acquire the product and distribute it among the masses. Uh -huh. They have not done it on time. The lack of warehousing. This time it has been added and supplemented by the fact there has been a steady increase in the prices of petrol and diesel that also impacts movement of the vegetables products, the and vegetables products and stuff like that, that's right. including the generator we, we run. So automatically the, it gets, automatically it get, it gets transferred to the food prices. Mm -hmm. As I say, this is all seasonal, but the main crisis and the main problem is still nature-based. India has to figure out a way to this over-dependence on monsoon if that can be curtailed, a new way, a new pathway can be organized. So for all the obvious reasons, uh, for food inflation to be in double digits uh, certainly hints at... Uh, it's at, 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 at that and then there is this huge display of this uh, supply chain which we have often talked of but never handled it. Warehouses, where are they? What, uh, what about the price control measures uh, which the government has taken in the past, Shantanu? How do you look at... Uh, those measures those are, and those are almost like staccato firing. I mean, they take it month by month. They take month by there month. There is this price stabilization fund which was, you know, stated. It, it, but it has been stated. I, I guess crore. Mr. Agarwal probably can throw some light on it, whether it still exists on paper on the Pukash is no, there, still there, in the Mr. bank. Agarwal, Mr. Agarwal. In this budget, 500 crores were earmarked for price stabilization fund specifically on food items and food commodities. Right. I think of and perishable uh, yes, agriculture. So therefore, nature. the government is drawing out of this. Whenever a government is procuring mm. anything on this, the government is drawing on it. And then this f uh, price stabilization fund is for subsidies also. If the uh, 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 price of some item uh, rises beyond a price, the government can subsidize out of this. Mm -hmm. So e even if has you cannot used? control the price, has but you been, can subsidize. Has it been put to use, uh, the price stabilization fund? Definitely, because uh, the government uh, at present uh, is supplying pulses to the state government has offered to supply at 120 rupees. 
uh, to, the, to the people. And international market, the price is more than 150. But do we and have domestically also the government is procuring 170? Do we? Yeah, Shantanu. Just one small point. To what he's saying. I think there's another factor that we keep ignoring is the retail factor. Yeah. How does our retailers operate? They mm -hmm. operate on a 50% profit basis. They float a huge, huge theory of deficiencies of supplies. And as a result, the common consumer is forced to buy. Let me take a small example of the city I live, which is Delhi. In various parts of Delhi, you will find various rates of vegetables and pulses. How come? Why is it there is no uniformity in the prices? Those are areas the government needs to intervene and check and try and understand. Whose responsibility? Whose responsibility? The state, the state, respons the state responsibility, the absolutely. But then the point is the state is busy in so many other things, including how to control uh, MLA standing on chairs inside the assembly. So it's very difficult to handle but you those know, cases. Wh what, yeah? is, what is our situation on the pulses? Do we have enough in our stocks right now? Definitely. Because because already paper, we have the government stocks. has procured 115 uh, tons of million uh, tons of uh, pulses and they've placed order for import also so that supply gap uh, demand supply gap is being uh, well planned out hmm. it is now the state government that they should uh, just give their demand to the central government pick up and uh, uh, distribution channels should be uh, efficiently managed otherwise there if there are leakages in the distribution system in the state government there will be problem even they have to check the holders also hmm. last year as you mentioned that there was a problem of the holders who take benefit of a uh, shortage supply everywhere till we will move uh, uh, from september to october people and know that there will be shortage of price uh, rise yes, which yes, is yes, uh, they, they will hold and then they, that kind of manipulation will be uh, controlled and uh, ultimately the answer is a national agriculture market and that where uh, it is a free movement of food items from one state to sec uh, another state then only this pockets of shortages and pockets of surplus can be matched along and a, a uniform rate can be uh, stabilized the rate of food items will be there in the in national market and uh, on the f uh, level of this vegetables mm -hmm. the government has to do much more uh, on these issues more steps are required because they are of perishable no nature yeah so and we are we are also trying we to see onion and tomato and on the, the price rise on the pulses protein. front we are also trying to improve our production of pulses pulses production uh, uh, is a limitation there hmm. but ultimately when there there is a better realization to the farmers uh, they will improve but the other limitations are there with regard to availability of area for uh, suitable for pulses growth so i think we will have to plan from the import in also. terms of our warehouses have has our infrastructure yeah, really improved yes. over these years warehouses is an infrastructure which requires a lot of investment government has provided whether you require cold storage uh, and other warehousing that supply chain management is a big area where it, there is a, a gap of huge investment yeah and there, there happens to be shared yes, responsibility yes. of the center and the State, no, there, where, you know, the private investment will have to come up you see, and therefore PPP a more pro model of uh, building uh, this warehouses is being suggested by the government where private investment can come and it becomes a revenue generation for them and it will help the country. So ultimately warehousing sector private investment has to come But that's apparently a very I important think, I think I have been raising this. One of the points is Mr. Agrawal has said that you have to take action against the holders. That will never happen. Let's be very clear about it. No government <laughs> no. can actually take action against holders. So hoarding is going to remain. The hoarding kind. will remain like the hoarding you see on the streets. Yeah, Number Hoarding one. of every kind. The hoarding of every kind. Secondly, perishable items like vegetable can sustain themselves in warehouses, cold storages, provided the supply chain to the main centers works out very smoothly. Okay. That doesn't. Mm -hmm. As a result, Quick shot prices are handled at local mandis, and that is the point when holders make the most of it. I'm talking absolutely basic. There's no point going into multiple papers and files and GOMs and all kind of committees people create. Pulses, vegetables are basically a common man's product, and my day to day's product, the onion that comes in the potato that comes in the pulses. Imagine we are talking about 100 rice. rupees, 120, 120. 120. Okay, and 300 rupees 300 pulses. 300 rupees pulses. Okay, now this is one. Secondly, in terms of supplies, 
it is i mean, I've, let me again reiterate the states have never been up to it but their lackadaisical latitude is really reflected in any pieces it is always said that the government has messed it up big time governments doesn't they don't mess up because production is on the countryside yeah. the countryside have farms they have the agricultural land the agricultural land is not in the heart of delhi it's not in cannot place it's somewhere outside it's a different state if they don't handle it, it is very difficult for the center to push in there coming back to the core issues these kind of pressures i think for the next couple of months will continue in the global market petroleum and diesel continue to rise they're still firming up prices from five it could go up to a little more it'll again be driven on to the consumers here mm. as the way the government is doing if the prices are falling the consumers gets a benefit which is a great move great initiative mm. And if again the prices go up, the consumers will have to pay for that. That's right. I think it all adds up to it. Is that? But I come back to my core point: we have to move away from this monsoon-based system. If we can't do that, somebody has to identify a and miracle. And parallelly, it has to be looked with the Parally, agricultural marketing exactly, aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Parallelly, what the way the government is initiated, yeah. that's a great initiative. Yeah. That needs to be sustained. That needs to be pushed forward. You know, sudden uh, you you've seen some sort of a push there to the agriculture sector. In fact, last year's budget was largely uh, there was a lot of focus on the agriculture sector. Is that really enough, Shantanu? No, certainly not. Hmm. We, I mean, see, we agriculture sector needs miracles, need marvels. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And you think water is one crucial area where water has always been a crucial area. Yeah. Water, I mean, we have talked about water wars. In another ten years, you will see actual water wars in India. That's a separate issue. The government is trying very hard to link the canals and the rivers. That also, people have a problem with that. Hmm. But somewhere, water, of course, is a problem that can be managed, provided a mechanism is in place. Mm -hmm. I see a lack of mechanism here. I mean, if I'm dependent on the vagaries of the monsoon. That means I have to depend on the nature. So it's almost like a fatka in the stock market. You know, I mean, we're it could go back, this way. We are going back to the basics here. Mr. Agarwal, there the are two, three problems. issues I t tell you. If our government is planning on those issues, one thing is that uh, the irrigation uh, caption, ca ca capped area of irrigation is uh, plan government has planned very well in advance. That for, through the budget and other infrastructure development, at least 26 per percent of further <coughs> irrigation area land covered under irrigation area will be covered with regard to water the problem is not the quantity of water there is sufficient availability of water in the country but there is a problem of management when 84 percent of our water available is consumed in agriculture sector that has to be judiciously used and S therefore that's my that's point. important yes. point is that uh, the uh, narin modi ji has focused that a more crop per drop that is a 84 percent of our water available water is being consumed by the agriculture sector so our focus of uh, the judicious use of water should be on agriculture sector and that is the focus hmm. the creating more area under uh, irrigated uh, covered area giving a better uh, uh, judicious use of water is important hmm. and on the holding also the law is very clear very strong our essential commodities act is very strong it calls of uh, even imprisonment for life and other th there is a severe but, but punishment is it, is so it if even it practiced? is implemented i think the government has a strong resolve not to let holdings uh, do spoil but the holdings party. still happen mr agarwal holdings still happen we it haven't been able as, to as late as last we, year we we happen to yeah of course we cannot really get rid of holders in our country no. why is it so I'll i mean one would really like to question as to why these implementation of something as important as checking hoarding is such a difficult task in our no, country. No, it's not a difficult. It is the lack of will from the government uh, if hoardings are not controlled. Sir, lack of because will from which government? The from the state government. From the state, state government or the centre uh, government? Have to uh, look into it. Uh, the hoarding is a matter of state government. And if they lack the will, the law is very clear. There are uh, sufficient provisions in the law to control and okay. state governments will have to act. Ultimately, the people will have to understand that if the, there is a food price inflation, state governments has a bigger role than the central government. Okay. In our debates and everywhere, we start blaming the central government. Actually, 
state governments have a bigger role and in food price inflation because they are the they are the ones who, who have to supply uh, manage the supply and they the are distribution the person part. who can act against order sir, I think, they I think, are uh, the person are, who are, can Chantanu, we are, I think yes, yes, are the person Agarwal, sir i think we are getting again in the gst mode i agree <laughs> we are not getting uh, okay, into the i GST agree mode. that yes the state governments have a major role to play look at the way they handle forward trading it is the biggest bone of contention between the states and the center. No, 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 no but what, what, what I don't so, agree on these two issues. So tell me, how, how come you guys should have handled... Forward market has huh. nothing to do on commodity prices. I no understand that market. That has nothing to do in commodity prices. It's a sir, quite different Sir, market. sir, forward okay, trading me. increases speculations in the market, isn't it? So that's it's as simple is, as that. Is, is, okay, let me, let me ask you this, Mr. Agarwal. What should be a clear solution to the the checks in these prices? We know that every time when there is some sort of a change in the weather conditions, when the monsoon is going to come, there has to be some sort of a thing like this to happen in the market. And of course, it really doesn't leave the government in a very safe zone. Inflation goes up and it certainly is a cause for worry. So how do you think and what are the clear solutions? We are working on the what we, in our view, the clear solution is national agriculture market. We have started the steps that will be implemented. <laughs> Second is short term shortages will be managed, will have to be managed from international procurements mm -hmm. and that is also being taken up and advanced um, uh, steps for uh, considering the future price rise etc should be taken that is also there that a price stabilization fund has been uh, started and ultimately uh, the uh, investment of the government in providing uh, in the rural areas infrastructure like irrigation etc then insurance crop insurance these kind of security to the farmers will ultimately will give more confidence for them to uh, uh, continue in the agriculture sector and yeah. participate in the economic development mm -hmm. so we our approach is very focused we want strong reforms in the agriculture sector security of farmers their uh, minimum support price etc will also be taken care of and insurance uh, the uh, pradhan mantri uh, uh, fasal bima yojana is a very important step in giving them confidence and security to the farmers to continue in their profession and that uh, increasing infrastructure through uh, uh, irrigation covering more area under indication okay. these are steps and move government is moving in those direction and if there are any short term uh, shortages or mismatch in demand supply, it will be uh, managed through uh, imports and price stabilization funds. See, that's uh, the point is that the, the mechanism to ensure that the prices at least can be kept in check. And uh, Shantanu, there indeed the one prices, will have to. One, yeah, prices. Agricultural prices, yeah. Uh, products, prices of agricultural products can be kept in check only when you have the demand and supply chain completely under your grip number one number two i think with all the plans you guys uh, people are discussing and debating here all we have to do is india needs a new revolution now in agriculture the green revolution has happened punjab it has gone up it has come down also the rice revolution has also happened mr ms swaminathan has done with it and moved on we need if some 10 scientists could sit in a room and debate how to now progress further from this the way once israel did it with mm. no water in their zone how did they cultivate the drip culture and the way they could develop farmlands after farmland acres after acres that big push is required in agriculture otherwise these debates will be endless because again we'll go back to the fact that the new government will come in center or maybe this government will stay and they will say sorry the holders we cannot control that's and a state subject will states have to pull continue. up their socks will state have to really i really pull doubt up their states socks. will ever pull up their socks states unless it comes to the push comes to shove like it has happened in bengal with a completely financially starved state only then mamta Banerjee could realize the benefits of the coal auctions otherwise they were not realizing it that the fact that the coal auction a significant portion of money goes but to is states. the going get to get be you know is it going to get more difficult because the states I let's see say a if larger they, cooperation with the states I do see that there's okay. no no I mean some states are still are going like Jayalalitha came and made a hue and cry about GST but also the fact that the GST meeting taking place in Calcutta even if momentarily gives a fellow Bengali like me great hope I mean I still believe that maybe 
something is happening and Bengal probably is also realizing that they need to be a part of the mainstream. Hmm. States are realizing, but I think the biggest push actually should come from the center. We need to identify these new areas as to how we can shift away from monsoon based agriculture to a completely modern mechanized agriculture. Otherwise, as long as you depend on monsoon, 70% of our products, more than 250, 260 million farmers will still be dependent on the vagaries of nature. And that will be a serious problem. Fine. Mr. Agarwal, uh, can people expect the prices to ease down soon? Yes, definitely. The government is well aware of the situation. It is determined with the proper willpower and is, it is planning in well in advance that a price will not rise beyond a, a certain, certain range. There will be fluctuations you cannot when you are uh, asking an economy to open up you cannot control everything uh, prices control but there are setting up limit and sub that can be managed through proper supply uh, management and government is well aware of the issues government is taking steps and uh, it will put uh, pressure on the state government also to act in advance so that uh, this today's meeting outcome of today's meeting will be very important where all the issues are very clear. Government is taking steps to implement them so that price rises are under control. Well, we'll certainly have to wait to see if that really happens. So, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me here Once in this program. Meet. That's thank all you. for today in Insight. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.